Any kind of reaction for me? I think they looks should. perfect. Perfect. Fantastic. Thank you all. Um, great. So I have um, I have the honor of presenting this kind of best practices for developing and implementing open MRS. Um, and this is kind of all about this open MRS implementation toolkit and, you know, how might it be useful for you all? Um, and just a little bit of a background that this toolkit was created over, gosh, a number of months through a number of stakeholders contributing as part of this um, technical assistance platform. That's that, um, you know, blue, blue uh, icon in the corner. Um, and there's quite a few resources there kind of available for general health information systems, um, but specifically this is for kind of open MRS and electronic health records um, in general. So what you should expect from the next 20 minutes. So the goal is to identify key phases, resources, and assistance for open MRS implementation that can lead to desired outcomes. So we want to describe the common barriers of EMR implementation and resource constrained environments. We want to recognize the benefits of sharing implementation experiences and resources. We want to consider major implementation inputs and activities that lead to successful EMR implementation. And we want to locate the the um, OpenMRS implementation toolkit, resources, and, and expertise. So what is in this? We call it the quick guide. Um, so this is um, a, a kind of a spreadsheet that contains a number of different resources. Um, the first is that we're going to go over um, today that the implementation toolkit's purpose, how we created it, how you might use the toolkit, the main features of the toolkit, how to contextualize for country-specific strategies um, and ways to get external support. And then, of course, kind of the implementation monitoring and learning side of this toolkit. So OpenMRS implementation uh, toolkit's purpose. So as we, as we know, when it comes to electronic health record implementations, there are many, many common challenges. Um, so you can see just a number of quotes, you know, across, across the board for things that can happen when you go to implement um, open, M or open MRS or electronic health records. You know, there isn't enough IT support, the facility ran out of funding, you know, et cetera. And this is because we know that implementing electronic systems and electronic health records is really complex. You know, there's lots of things that you need to put into the system, tons of activities to get it up and running, um, and tons of things to keep, keep a system sustained. So every electronic health record implementation has its own unique scope and challenges, different diseases that it's kind of targeting or trying to support, different um, clinical workflows, et cetera. Um, and every single one presents a new opportunity for improvement. And so we have a lot to share and, and to learn from one another about these implementation experiences. So the vision of this toolkit is kind of thinking about the, these kind of ideas or trying to answer these questions. So what if you could copy and replicate another country's successful implementation approaches directly? Or what if you had a place where you could discover implementation practices that have been tested in the field and at scale? And what if you could access and use implementation documents and tools instead of creating your own? So again, the, the, the purpose of this is that it is to provide countries guidance and templates for planning implementation and maintenance of open MRS. Um, and these are to be used and needed and contextualized to your specific needs, priorities, and environment. So in other words, these are really truly just templates that you can use to kind of walk through the steps, right? But you're going to have to take them and you're going to have to make them specific to the things um, that you're trying to do, the problems you're trying to solve, and the electronic health record um, that you'll be developing and, and implementing. So how was this toolkit created? Um, we worked, um, you know, to, to gather um, a collection of activities based on the experience of open MRS implementers working in multiple countries. We compiled the list of resources that could support open MRS planning. We identified specific implementation activities um, needed for countries without electronic um, medical records. And we call those kind of green field, right? You can picture a big green field um, where there's no electronic health records um, where you're going to go and, and, and um, implement one. Um, you might be migrating to open MRS, and we called this a yellow field, so you're switching from one electronic health record to another, or perhaps you're updating from a prior version of open MRS to open MRS 3, and so this is what we call a brown field implementation. So we use these color codes to help us kind of distinguish which activities might be more important for someone who's just starting to, you know, or a country that's just starting with an EMR uh, to those that are more seasoned and maybe transitioning. So there's different activities required for different things.
And then we curated input on the spectrum of implementation needs from additional um, initial open MRS implementations at a few sites um, to scale up um, to tens or hundreds of facilities and then to scale out open MRS uh, three features spanning multiple uh, programs or disease areas. So really looking at kind of implementation to scale and then to scaling out across different um, disease areas. So how might you use the toolkit? So there's multiple ways that you can do it. You can pick more than one of these, um, but you could just look at the guidance for different phases of implementation. Maybe you'll kind of glance through the list of activities and you'll say, oh, these are the things that I really need to do or our team needs to do or that our country should uh, focus on. Um, you could even take and adapt the plans or the tools um, to make sure that you're addressing your most pressing challenges. Maybe you'll take the full toolkit and you'll adapt the whole thing to guide your implementation from start to finish. And maybe you'll um, share your implementation expertise back um, with the, you know, the open MRS community to improve the toolkit. Um, and then finally, we can, you might be able to share your experience with the toolkit with other countries and communities uh, and learn how they use the toolkit to achieve their successful implementations. So very similar to the whole open MRS community, the, the idea with this toolkit is we try to take things that we thought were really important, um, but it's going to always grow and learn and we can learn from each other about best practices in implementing um, uh, EMRs. So let's go through the features, the main features of the toolkit. And so I, I mentioned earlier that you're looking here at a spreadsheet. So this is kind of the different um, tabs at the bottom of the spreadsheet. But um, the first one is um, an overview tab connecting the terminology with the toolkit contents. And so there's lots of different terms that are very specific to this toolkit. Um, and this very first page is going to try to get you oriented um, to the different phases and the different um, kind of vocabulary uh, that we use in this toolkit. Um, then uh, there's a bunch of different um, tabs here on the bottom that actually go through the different phases of implementation. And so this isn't just going to cover development, right, or implementation, you know, actually rolling out the system. This starts way, way beforehand. So if you're just beginning, how do you um, kind of learn about OpenMRS? How do you sensitize your community, your stakeholders to it? Um, how do you plan? How do you develop? All of those things kind of come stepwise, but it's going to start way, way before any sort of development into sensitization and planning. Um, each one of the tabs then contains um, a list of activities, so you can see that in this column here, um, and then tasks. So sometimes an activity requires multiple different tasks or has multiple different resources. Um, so you can see kind of the list of the task there. And then um, those, there's links to helpful um, resources um, here that you can just click on to kind of bring you to um, additional templates or items or training modules. Um, there's some um, additional sources that, um, you know, we've, we've collated across the OpenMRS community. Um, so you can, you can click on those resources there. There's also this easy navigation at the top. You know, if you're not familiar with using a kind of a spreadsheet like this, you can kind of click on these buttons and pretend it's like a little web page so you can kind of move forward and back. Um, so there is this way that to use it if you're if you're not as comfortable clicking on those bottom tabs, but they're, they're both the same. Um, and then finally, we 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 put together this dashboard, um, very very simple dashboard to document the technical assistance needs and progress made towards each phase of implementation. And so it has just kind of across the different um, stages that we talked about sensitization and planning and development. Um, what kind of technical assistance would you need, and and kind of how far along are you? Um, so just at a glance, kind of where things are in terms of your um, your implementation. Um, and then we gave you some kind of guidance at the top for what we think that these numbers um, can mean again, to kind of help you um, kind of use the toolkit and kind of use these, um, these uh, uh, dashboard consistently. All right, so, um, so now I think just think about like we're working, if you're working with multiple stakeholders at a national and international level to plan our implementation, how can this group use the OpenMRS implementation toolkit? And so um, we can look at this case study of working with CDC technical assistance platform and the TAP partners. And so this is just an example that, that we can walk through here. Um, so the first is sort of looking at the terms and who's responsible. So who's involved with the things, who's involved with the different stages that, that need to happen um, as you work towards uh, implementation. So this row shows the terms. So um, this would be from um, the... Uh, 
The CDC headquarters and TAP partners like GEMBI will build and share TAP health information systems like OpenMRS3. The country-based teams um, uh, may use the country-based teams may use when describing the phases of health information systems. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm I'm messing up here. Sorry. This is this top one is um, what like often partners or funders might describe. So this is very specific to the TAP project itself. I think this next phase is a lot more relevant to you all for the country perspective um, when um, you're describing the phases of health information system project planning. So these are very um, traditional stages for for um, project uh, management. Um, we really rely on these phases for the um, for the toolkit again because it just aligns with more common software development language and just implementation in, in general. Um, this phase also aligns with another kind of product, if you will, um, called the Health Information System Project Management Toolkit. Um, and this is a series of templates for project managers. So if, if you're very new to project management, um, you know, this would be just an overarching kind of system for you to help you kind of see how you better document all the different stages of electronic medical record system development. Um, and later on, we can kind of uh, share the link for this uh, this um, two minute video about the toolkit uh, and then share the links to, to the toolkit. But again, this whole implementation toolkit relies a lot on those templates again as another um, layer of guidance for you all. And then there's also um, guidance of which organizations would be involved. And so we can take a closer look here. Um, so I think just recognizing that, you know, if you have a bunch of different stakeholders who are involved in your electronic health record, um, you know, planning and implementation and et cetera, um, that different folks are gonna be uh, needed at different times. And so this is a really high level overview of, you know, maybe the CDC headquarters is, is involved at the project agreement, you know, but more likely this is the ministry and country offices, et cetera. So really just at a high level for this, for this instance, it can kind of show you who's involved when and at which stages of the, um, of the phase or of the uh, implementation. So now how to contextualize for country specific strategies here. So what we can recognize is that the OpenMRS implementation guidance, what we've been talking about now, really needs to get adapted, right, for country-specific strategies. Um, so um, in the short term, the countries can adapt the templates and the tools to guide implementation. And then as we've been talking about, you know, the kind of OpenMRS model is that over time, as you adopt and use this guidance, then we hope to learn from each other. So there's this kind of two-way street where we share this guidance and then we hope that lessons learned, you know, come in and get shared back with it to improve implementation across all of our communities. So the implementation um, kind of work stream, the strategy here. Um, so first there's kind of analysis for implementation, then we design and plan, then you can contextualize the toolkit, deliver it and monitor and prove it. Um, so the first kind of you know big piece and just kind of categories here is understanding the context, of course, identifying the needs, reviewing the toolkit itself, determining the priorities and the activities for improvement. So this is the first kind of step with the implementation strategy. Then um, you would assign roles and responsibilities, develop monitoring goals and strategies in the design and plan phase. And then it works to contextualize implementation plans to the country's EMR goals and adapting the tools um, in support of implementation. Conducting pre-implementation and, uh, and implementation activities as you deliver you know, this, this work, um, and then monitoring and improving it. So adapting the toolkit. So just some kind of best practices for how to do that. I think, you know, the first one is to really recognize, you know, where are you in terms of your implementation case? Are you a green field? Are you just starting? Are you yellow field? Are you transitioning? Or are you moving from one open MRS instance to another uh, in a brownfield implementation? Next, you can determine the implementation phase that fits your needs. You know, are you in the planning stage? Are you in the um, implement or the development phase or the implementation phase? And then from there, you can review the list of activities for your case and for your milestones. And then you can convene the um, project leads for input on the RACI chart. So that's the um, responsible and accountable um, kind of traditional kind of project management thing where you assign different people um, the different roles um, on, a, on a particular um, project plan. Um, and then we kind of recommend that when you do that, um, you're being specific as possible. So you're not just naming necessarily an organization for someone responsible, but you're actually saying, you know, so-and-so at this organization is really doing this specific activity. 
Um, and then, of course, you work um, with the assigned groups to identify and document the dependencies and the timeframes, and then um, iteratively update status activities and assignments in, in routine kind of calls. So you kind of set it all up, and then you're going to implement it and kind of talk through it um, in weekly calls. We sorry, weekly, monthly, whatever frequency calls. All right, so other considerations for adapting the toolkit. Um, so I think one piece is to iteratively plan and then execute select implementation activities or improvements using the toolkit. Um, so making sure that we're, you're really bringing together any other people with implementation experience, um, sharing previous implementation approaches that worked well, um, discussing and making sure it's clear, you know, what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, what's the timeline? Using this to brainstorm and identify challenges or areas of improvement. Um, reviewing what activities and resources in the toolkit might respond to the challenges. Measuring how you will know if implementation is successful. And what changes can you make if you uh, that will result in a more successful implementation. So ways to get external report, uh, ex external support. And so I think just recognizing across, um, you know, there's lots of different needs across different countries um, and different groups. Um, and so just knowing, you know, do you need more intensive kind of support and, and guidance or, or are, are you a little bit um, kind of lighter needs in terms of um, uh, the 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 support that you might need. And so we kind of laid out here some illustrative roles and responsibilities with, with you know, different options that might happen in terms of support needed. Um, and we recognize that the implementation is complex. And so kind of looking at what technical assistance might be needed as you look across the different phases, you might identify that, oh, wow, it's much, you know, we have a bunch of really strong developers. It's really hard for us to plan or to know exactly what we should be doing um, to, to make sure we're planning properly. Um, so again, you might sort of recognize that you need more support um, or more guidance in a particular area rather than um, another. And you can use this um, dashboard to kind of indicate that and then we'll show you, you know, at a glance of where you might need more support. Um, so additional assistance on so more ideas for implementation planning. So um, making sure that you you can kind of take the implementation toolkit quick guide and you can just take it right away and, and use it um, and you might not need any assistance. Um, maybe you need a, a deeper orientation set, uh, se session on the implementation toolkit. Um, and I think once you all have gotten it and looked at it, you know, maybe we decide we need to have another session where we look at more of the pieces of this or go through some specific examples. Um, so maybe we host more orientation sessions on it. Um, and then there's, of course, kind of adaptation or review sessions that could happen within your team, or perhaps we could host more of these uh, within the OpenMRS community. Um, and then there's more of that as needed support and connections just from OpenMRS implementers. So, you know, using the OpenMRS community to ask your questions, um, you know, using the support forums or webinars, you know, talking to, to the OpenMRS team to say, hey, actually, I'm struggling here. You know, where can you point me to for, for guidance? So, again, just relying on each other. Um, um, as, a, as a community to support implementation. Um, again, this is really, um, you know, kind of a, a, a work in progress, right? The implementation toolkit will never be fully finished, right? And so we hope it will iteratively um, get updated. So please contact Jen anytime, right? If you have questions, you can also reach out to me, Beth. I realized I didn't introduce myself, but I work at University of Washington with the Digital Initiatives Group at iTech. Um, so hello. <laughs> but you're also welcome to reach out to me. And then the last piece is just implementation of the kind of monitoring and learning side of things. So recognizing that, you know, as you're implementing, there's sort of, there's, looking at the implementation itself. So you're monitoring and learning the implementation to learn from itself, right? So um, kind of a funny concept, but um, really looking at guidance for um, creating dynamic monitoring and learning plans, um, illustrative output and outcome indicators, and it should be based on the activities outlined in the toolkit. Um, so what is a learning plan? So implementation plans provide a path towards quality open MRS implementation. But as we know, any sort of plan never goes according to plan, right? So there's always going to be some kind of deviation or something new or something you have to add or take away, um, and that's okay. So supporting implementing partners and monitoring um, implementation activities shows us um, where and when plans are working and where we need to adjust the implementation toolkit to support better outcomes. 
Um, we can also integrate um, PDSA cycles, so plan, do, study, act um, cycles in our implementation toolkit, and that can open up opportunities for learning and improvement. All right, so um, with that, um, with the toolkit, uh, so the toolkit itself has a monitoring and learning plan, so you can use it um, to do a number of activities, so identifying stakeholders and reviewing the logic model, et cetera. Um, and important questions to ask for the monitoring and learning plan. So are there implementation reporting requirements or standard indicators that should be included in a monitoring plan? And oftentimes these can come from the funders, from the ministry, you know, from other stakeholders that you need to make sure that you're tracking as you, as you plan and, you know, imp uh, develop and implement a system. Um, are you including any implementation activities that you haven't done before? Are you using a new approach? Are there particular milestones and implementations that are ideal touch points for reflecting on progress and making adjustments? And are you aware of any risks that a monitoring plan can help identify and mitigate? So we're going to end it um, end this session here. Welcome um, questions, I believe. Um, and then, of course, we can make sure that you all get the link to the actual toolkit, which I'm realizing is not part of this uh, slide deck. Uh, so I'll make sure to, to pull that up and, and put that in the chat for you all. Um, but thank you all for for a chance to present and, and welcome questions if there's if there's time.